It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege of interviewing the Liberty's head club disc golf coach, Coach Steve Bowman. How are you doing today? Doing amazing. Thank you. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to get started in coaching in the sport of college disc golf? Uh, disc golf was a passion of mine for years. I love playing. I've been involved in the sport for longer than I'd like to admit. Um, not from the beginning stages of disc golf, which was back in the 60s, but... Uh, mid seventies, I started playing, um, actually was out West, lived out West, grew up out West. And so the sport was kind of in its infancy back in those days. And really for me, I enjoyed playing, even though we didn't have courses where I lived, I just didn't throw, enjoyed throwing the Frisbee, enjoyed that technique of playing the sport and the challenge, never played ball golf, um, really didn't ever have the money or the time to kind of do that. But enjoyed that level of a game as an individual but really for me I never pursued coaching disc golf um I wasn't a top competitor I wasn't you know usually coaches are you know people that have been in the sports superior athletes won titles whatever you look at any sport football basketball baseball they're all players that have competed at top levels for the most part some of them are professional coaches that have done that but um, I was passionate about being outside and building the courses. And so that's how disc golf coaching came relative to me and Liberty um, as I built their disc golf course for them and, and opened up the opportunities for the collegiate world to enter, you know, Liberty's campus. What was that like getting started in the sport of disc golf at such a young age of 12? Yeah, I enjoyed it. You know, for me, it was just something I, I could do on my own. Uh, I was in a single family, my mom and I, and I was the only child. And so I had a lot of time where I could figure out things that I like to do and, and go and tackle those for hours. Uh, my mom was in basketball. I played basketball in college. So basketball has been my competitive side of things. It was what my family did. She put herself through college as a single parent. And I was right there as the mascot chasing basketballs and, and doing all that as, as a young age. But, you know, I enjoyed playing. That was my competitive side. This golf was more my release. I could just really get into doing something and learn the craft on my own. Um, and that's what I found that it's just enticing for me to stay with it and try and get good at it. Going to Lynchburg, what was that like getting to compete in disc golf throughout your college time? Well, when I, when I went to Lynchburg, we moved here in 87, there was no disc golf. So the disc golf bag and discs all got put in storage. And so it wasn't until later in my life that I started to be an integral role in bringing disc golf to Lynchburg and so I never really got to compete in college. So it was something that I had other aspirations in college to try and accomplish. They didn't quite work out the way I'd hoped and dreamed, but I, I did push through and learn a lot of things. Um, probably helped me be a coach today because disc golf has so many players, but only few can compete. So I was one of those ones in the basketball world on the outside trying to peck away and get my way in. And, and it didn't quite happen the way I like to, but Disc golf was something that as it grew, it grew really fast. And fortunately, I had had a grasp on what the sport was like, understood it, uh, had been around it for a while and knew, you know, what it could offer a university like Lynchburg so, or at Liberty in here in Lynchburg. And so for me, I thought it was something that was as my older years, I'd married, had two boys at this point, wasn't in school, but I'd gone to Liberty and so I was alumni. So I thought it was a way that I could really give back and help the university grow in a program that was new and up and coming. How has that been like obviously bringing disc golf to central Virginia? I think it's been really receptive. I think more of it because I spent a lot of time with parks and recs and, and different communities helping build outdoor spaces, whether it's hiking and mountain biking trails to obviously multiple disc golf courses that I've built in our area and, you know, probably a hundred mile radius that I've helped infiltrate, you know, the disc golf scene throughout the community. So, you know, the rewards of that is having, like we were saying, you know, worlds come to, to Lynchburg in August, 2024, which is a major event and, and just kind of like a, a bucket list thing. So one of those things that 
you dream about. I've gone to probably 10 different world's events and, and volunteered and, and been a part of them, but to have one here in our hometown on courses that I've been a part of helping build and, and navigate and play is just, it's kind of a dream come true, pretty amazing. And just, you know, pinch me when it's over because it's going to be exhausting and a ton of work, but just one of those things I'm excited about. What was that experience like for you hearing that Liberty wanted a disc golf program and bringing a disc golf program to Liberty? Yeah. So at that time I was really just about building the courses. I had built one course. I uh, had that under my belt. The Liberty students were playing that course and the uh, university staff reached out to the county that had put in the course and they got my name through that aspect. And they had me come out, look at a piece of property, about 50 acres. And they said, would this be good enough? I said, this would be great. It's an amazing piece of property. And so that's our East Campus course. It's right off of the campus, right across the highway. So the students can get to it really easily. But really, I wasn't looking to be the coach. I was looking at, I just want to keep building courses. I want to have more places selfishly for me to go play. And, uh, you know, I knew my friends and community were loving it as well as I was. But Liberty was really good because they had a whole maintenance team. They had a grounds team and they built everything. So I just had to lay it out and they did all the physical hard labor, which I, this was awesome. This was great. I can do courses like this all day long. I don't have to do any work. Just go scout it, imagine things and, and you know, let them create it. And so that was really cool. But I remember sitting down with the, uh, the athletic director and the uh, club sports director who was the hockey coach. And I said, oh, man, you got this great course. They didn't know what it was. They wanted to know what they could do with it. And so I shared all these things. They could have an intercollegiate program. They could have PE classes there. Um, the student population could use it like crazy. And so they were excited about all, of, all those things. And at that time, college disc golf was probably six years old. And I had found information about them. I said, here, you could go here and compete for a national championship. And I walked away. I went away thinking I'm going to go build another course somewhere. And about three months later, they approached me back and said, hey, we would love you and your passion to be a part of our program. You're an alum. You get what Liberty's about. We love how you're passionate about disc golf. Would you be the coach? And of course, my first question was, well, does it pay? And they're like, well, not really. No, it's a, a low paying gig. You know, most of the coaches in the programs work somewhere else in the university. I have a full time job outside of that. And so they're like, we'll have a big budget for you. We'll have all kinds of stuff and you'll get to start the program. And and for me, it wasn't about money. I, I'm a passionate person about disc golf and I wanted to see it grow. And I thought the opportunity was huge. Our first year, we had like eight uh, student athletes and we, you know, kind of found them out of the woodwork by putting a basket right in the center of the education building and said, hey, come join our team, see if they could putt. And to this day, we have over 30 student athletes on our team, men and women, and it's been amazing to see it grow. What was that feeling like being announced as the head coach for disc golf and building a program? It was kind of a weird situation because still at the time, this was 14 years ago, disc golf was still for the major population was some rural kind of backwoods, you know, you didn't talk about it much sport and some other connotations, but more or less, it wasn't a, a prestigious collegiate thing. There was no Harbaugh announcement like, hey, I'm leaving Michigan to go to the pros. It's, you know, yeah, here's our Liberty Disc Golf coach, Steve Bowman. And I'm like, okay, great. You know, I got some nice gear. I got to design that kind of stuff. And, and off we went, you know. And so it was really anticlimactic more than anything else. It was just more of an excitement of a few guys that I knew that were going to college that could play. And they were the backbone of who we are. One of my assistant coaches to this day played for five years and, and stayed in the program as coached for the other seven years. So he's as passionate as I am. And so it was kind of people like that, that in our circle, we were super excited, but outside of it, nobody cared. <laughs> as a coach, what is that like building your team and finding those players to play disc golf? That's the amazing thing that's changed in, in such a fast amount of time. I mean, these kids, obviously social media and their phones are their avenue to everything and they find you like you found me and and it's easy and they reach out to you and they start submitting their profiles but really coaching has been really just a unique way to to feed into a younger population that I'm passionate about my both of my boys are all around these college age kids so I feel like I'm investing in somebody else's kid like somebody is in mine because mine have gone off and played basketball and so it's kind of that circle of you know 
influence kind of thing. And so doing it through disc golf is super fun. Um, obviously I love the sport and I have played it for a long time. They all can beat me pretty much as, as much as anybody, but I still putt really well. I still throw a straight shot pretty far and I still, you know, really amaze them every once in a while in practice, I'll throw a shot and they'll be like, what did you just do coach? And, and so for me, it's more about helping them navigate that. We have some neat sponsorships for some of the major companies will adapt them right into their pro circuit if they graduate and, and meet their criteria. So that's kind of nice helping them field their passion and dream of playing disc golf at another level beyond collegiate, let alone, you know, making money doing it. So. As a head disc golf coach, what was that like building an 18 hole disc golf course? Yeah, that's been really fun. I've taken a lot of classes on what it was like to preserve the land, the, the slopes and angles of keeping you know, washaways and, and the ecological systems intact. So that was something that in my, you know, my history of building disc golf courses flowed right from the International Mountain Bike Association that I got a lot of training through building mountain bike trails and hiking trails. And so that was just a natural fit. I enjoyed that. For me, I built courses to help me get better as a disc golfer, whether it was shots that I lacked or I didn't throw very well or shots that I wanted to get better at. And so that's most of my courses were on that scale of building a disc golfer better. Um, so if you play one of my courses, it's going to put you to throw a variety of shots throughout the courses. And so that's the better part of developing a student athlete in our collegiate program. Can they navigate every type of shot out there for disc golf? And our courses are going to help them do that. So I go into building a course looking to do that. What does a typical game day look like in an 18 hole disc golf course? Yeah. So collegiate events are pretty unique. Um, disc golf in itself is such an individual sport. When you bring the team dynamic into it, um, our division one team has four players and they all compete as one team. Um, there's a doubles format. So the a pairing will go off. And if they decide they want to tee off on every odd hole, they'll tee off and they'll, throw both of them will throw a shot for a tee shot. The B pairing will go look at both of those throws and pick the best lie, whichever one gives them the best opportunity to get to the basket and both of them throw. If they don't make it in and they continue on the hole, then those A pairings come back. They look at both of the shots and try and finish out the hole. So it's different in normal disc golf playing in a tournament versus now you've got to really work together as a foursome to create this great dynamic to get through the hole, get through the course and play the course that way. And then when they play their singles rounds, all four scores get averaged. So they come out of that four rounds and we'll have one score with the average of all four of those scores coming in. And they kind of just build on it like ball golf. They'll just kind of lowest score throughout the week wins. And so, you know, that's where a lot of the rules and the courtesies and things came from was traditional golf. And we've adapted a basket that catches the disc and obviously throwing instead of taking a club and, and hitting a ball with it. Who are some of the teams that you compete against in your conference? Yeah, some of the teams that in our conferences, the conferences are now growing. Um, Eastern Mennonite University, Virginia Tech, um, uh, UVA. Uh, we've, we're partnered and in, in big uh, supporters with Clemson and NC State. They're both in different divisions, but we kind of grew together over the last 10 years, helped each other's programs grow. Both of those were student run. So a lot of our, our students would interact with those guys and build great relationships and help grow programs. Both of them have had large programs and, and great solid programs. So we feel like even though they're not in conference, they were kind of our friendly rivals, um, but for the most part built great relationships with them. And the disc golf community is really pretty fun. Um, those guys give it to each other on social media before events and afterwards are congratulatory and, and you know, hey, I got to get better because you beat me or whatever. And, you know, it's kind of a neat little spectrum of seeing these guys really get after it together. But uh, the conferences are growing. The Blue Ridge Conference, we've been in for about four years. Um, and so we're constantly adding some teams and uh, Emory and Henry is looking to add and, and jump into the conference. And so, you know, they're trying to keep it regionally trying to, you know, when we were younger and, and had to reach five, six hours to get teams like Clemson, they are that far away from us. You know, it didn't make sense. They've got a lot of schools around them now that they can kind of make their own. And so the three of us were kind of, you know, old hats in the program and kind of each developed our own conference. So we don't get to see each other as much anymore, but 
Uh, we see each other at nationals all the time. So, yeah. What is that like getting to compete against some of those big name schools like Virginia Tech, Clemson, yeah. and NC State? I think for us, you know, Liberty's always been a small school, private, independent Christian school. Um, you know, obviously our football team made a big, big, big splash this year, whether people think they deserved it or not, you know, they, they went to the Fiesta Bowl. And so, you know, basketball for the last two or three years has been, you know, into the you know madness, March madness of the 64 teams and gone, you know, a couple rounds in those. So I think Liberty's name as far as the sports world is getting out there. Um, obviously between we're about an hour south of UVA and about an hour north of, of Virginia Tech. So we're smack dab in the middle of, uh, of both of those prestigious schools. They both know us. We've both competed with them at, at multiple leveled sports. And so I think, you know, there's rivalries there being in-state foes, but also just learning too. you know, helping navigate a world where disc golf isn't clearly written like a, a football program. You know, the steps to take to get to a certain level disc golf, you kind of have to maybe go down some of those back streets and back roads to get to where you eventually want to be. So helping navigate that, I take pride in that. I want to help any program that's that's starting. Um, you know, obviously we've had the the pleasure and the the really the magnificent support of the university like no other school. There's none that are structured like we are that has a coaching role, that budgets our team, that has the academic stability behind our program to make sure that these guys are here for a reason. They're here to get an education. Disc golf may be that platform to keep them here, but we want to make sure that they're going to get that education for the amount of money they're spending. And, you know, that's the thing. We have very few on our team that are from Virginia. We have kids from Colorado, Minnesota, Texas, Florida, Pennsylvania, North Carolina. So they're all over the country uh, coming in and, and competing for a common cause and bring those worlds of disc golf from their communities and states into a different world of disc golf here in Virginia. So it's, it's neat how the landscape of the country plays into how the sport is played because a Colorado kid doesn't have the trees and it's an open course and up North it's, it's weather predicted and you're always playing in some nasty weather and, you know, come here, it's, it's a lot of wooded and long distance stuff. So the, the shape of the game really changes culturally by the regions. And so we bring a lot of kids into one area and ask them to adapt to how we play. So, yeah. For my listeners that don't know, how do you play the sport of disc golf? Yeah. So like I mentioned, it's a lot like golf, you know, golf, you start at a tee box and you have a distance that you have to get to, to the, we don't have a cup, but we call it a basket or, uh, you know, the chains that, that, that hold the basket together, the disc has to come to rest within that basket. And so um, really you'll throw and the least amount of throws to get into that basket wins the hole. And you carry out through the whole round of 18 holes, pretty much like, like golf. Some courses have 27, some have more, um, but really it just kind of plays that way. So you're competing with usually four people on that tee box that you're competing with and you go out and play. And at the end of the day, you stack up your scores and see where you lay up and you come out the next day and, Compete, 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 and hope to have the lowest score wins. In 2022, what was that experience like getting to hoist a Liberty Championship in the Flamethrowers and getting to hoist it in your home area? Yeah, I think for any time, you know, we're going to a tournament in Kentucky in a couple of weeks. You know, the preparation is now the goal. Yes, we want to win. We want to represent Liberty well. We want to have who we are as players represented as well, our faith is a big part of who we are being at a Christian school. So those things are kind of laid out before us before we ever get to the tournament. And so when we get there, we see our rivals, we see our, our competitors that we know really well. We have a lot of friends in the community of disc golf throughout the colleges, but they see us roll in and they don't like us a lot of times because we roll in in a nice bus and we look sharp because we've got a great gear package. And a lot of schools struggle to get, you know, representation from their university, which is unfortunate and so we strive to help them, but at the end of the day, they don't like us because we do get that support. So that's a constant battle before we even step on the course, let alone, you know, in that dynamic of playing the round. But leading into a tournament, especially a home tournament, we know what courses we're playing. So we know when to attack, when to really make sure we don't miss a hole. We don't want to take a bogey. We don't want to miss the par, um, what shots we can get birdies on. And so right now, that's what we're doing for the tournament that we're approaching looking at the courses, playing courses around here that replicate that, but then knowing where the trouble spots are going to be and making sure we're prepared to hit those in stride. 
In 2021, what was that experience like getting to compete in the United States Disc Golf Championship? Yeah, that was really fun. It's something that they've kind of meshed back and forth, including the collegiate side of things into the Dean's Cup, they called it, into the U.S. Disc Golf Championships down in Rock Hill, North um, South Carolina. Very prestigious event, probably one of the signature events throughout the U.S., um, and so that's really was fun to be a part of one of those eight teams invited there uh, to represent well, to play well. We were able to have our ladies play. Um, so that was exciting. You know, the team was really excited. You start the year off with that big tournament, kind of like NASCAR. You know, they have their biggest race of the year at the beginning. And for us, that at USDGC with the Dean's Cup, that's what it was. So there was a lot of summer prep. Nobody took time off because they knew we were going to be competing in that big tournament. Um, and we came into the the semester of school with about a month to prepare before we hit that event. And it just made practices really exciting. Um, the dynamic of tryouts and guys trying to make the team to be a part of that, you know, event was pretty prestigious and fun. So yeah, those are moments that you, as a coach, you like to, you know, have on your repertoire and, and do well in those events to showcase that you're a great program. What is that experience like getting a tryout for a program like disc golf? Over the last few years, it hasn't been good because as a coach, I've had to cut 30 to 40 people, uh, and that's never a fun thing. But that just says that we are a big program. There are a lot of kids that are coming to Liberty for disc golf. There's a lot of kids at Liberty that are playing disc golf. So as a program, you love that support, but it's never fun to cut kids like that in that big of a number. So over the last few years, we actually came up with a JV program, kind of called it our developmental program allowed kids to be on the team through the fall, which is not our big tournament scheduled section. Uh, they could learn the sport, get coaching, build relationships with the team, um, you know, learn from those guys as well as us as coaches. Um, so that was kind of nice to develop that. But when you still have to cut that many, it's never that fun. As a coach, what do you look at in those prospective student athletes that are looking to play the sport of disc golf? You know, for us to have those kind of numbers, you can be a little choosy. You can pick a little bit better who you kind of want. Well, with, with recruiting, we know a lot of kids that are coming in and we've been able to watch them over the summer before school starts with the tournaments that they're playing, um, you know, see what their skill levels are. Um, the national governing body, the Professional Disc Golf Association, the PDGA, they have a rating system. So we're able to see when they play tournaments, what kind of rating they get, how that compares with our team members. As coaches, we want to build a family environment. We want that to be something that they're going to work hard for. You know, you're going to go do things different for your family than you would somebody else. And so if you feel like you're connected at that, if you feel like that's a driving force for that community that we're in together for nine, 10 months of the year, if you feel like you will do battle with them, then you're going to go above and beyond at practices. You're going to go above and beyond to make the best of who you are as a disc golfer, not only in a friendship relationship, but also as a competitor. That's what we look for. Skills can be taught, disciplines and all those things can be coached in. But if you have a student athlete that's willing to go that extra mile and be a part of that family, that's a bigger driving force for us at Liberty Disc Golf. Can you talk about, of course, the culture that you've built for the disc golf program? Yeah, and that's really unique because Liberty sets us up for success. Uh, we're able to use a lot of our indoor facilities. We have two and a half courses on campus. Uh, we have a club team locker room. We have academic study hall facilities. We have mentorships. We have academic CASA advisors that are helping our student athletes in the classroom. So all the outside, you know, hustle and bustle at Liberty, which is exciting. One of the you know, few universities that has a, a artificial snow turf system where you can snowboard and ski all year round. There's a lot that draws their attention, you know, that takes away from everything. So we're trying to ask them to play disc golf, be students, and then Liberty has all these other things that they have out there for them that entices them. So keeping them grounded, helping them stay navigated, being in an environment where they're learning, you know, disc golf practices are so unique because you can't just Google search and say, well, if I want to learn how to run a pack line defense because we're at UVA and we're going to play UVA, I can do a Google search and find that. You can't do that for disc golf. I can't go figure out how to figure out this or that. There's a lot of tutorials on how to throw and footwork, and it's growing. But to run drills and to come up with these ideas, it's all going to be up here. And so eventually maybe I'll write a book or we'll have a program that will do a lot of tutorial things to give away some of our secrets when I retire. But 
right now we hold those a little close and we keep track of, you know, filling two, two and a half hours at a practice for guys to get better and throw better. As a head coach, what is it like seeing those players achieve those first milestones and even step onto that disc golf course for the first time? Yeah, I think with our program, it's really great having a full women's team, um, a full gamut of our division one, two, and three programs. It's amazing. You know, everybody wants to come in and be in that division one program. They all want to be at the top, you know, competing for everything at the top and life doesn't happen that way. There's very few percentage that come out and, and can play that aggressive as a freshman. And so to see the stair steps of our program, guys that trust that, that, that fall into, okay, I'm going to be D3 this year. I'm going to work hard. I'm going to compete. There's a national title on the line for division three. So there's a lot to compete for, but really kind of working through the process, trusting the process of coaching, being coached up, really learning from teammates, seeing the division one guys competing against them regularly and learning from them. That's when it's really special to see guys throughout the years, get to that division one level, maybe be a captain or a spiritual leader on our team and be leading the younger guys coming in. That's when I know it's rewarding that they've trusted me in the process. They've been diligent to work hard at it and the success is there for them. That's rewarding as a coach any day, all day long, whether you win a national title or not, to see young men and women become who they want to be and go out in the world and, and learn a lot through the sport of disc golf is amazing. How has it been like obviously having both a men's team and a women's team in disc golf for Liberty? Well, our two ladies are pretty tough. They uh, We've had a couple competitions where they have rivaled the guys in throwing and, and being accurate. So as a coach, that's amazing that the, the level of their skill is growing. That's only great as we get to the national scene and compete that I know that they're confident because they're competing against some of our top D1 guys and beating them and having fun day in and day out at practice, but helping understand that the mechanics of them throwing for their body style and our guys throwing for their body style is different and helping navigate them uh, through that. We've had some great alumni come back and help uh, in our women's program, which has been huge. Hannah uh, Macbeth was in our program for three years and her and her husband, Paul lived in the area for a long time and would come to practices and to have those two as a professionals that have made it big in the disc golf professional world, feeding into our student athletes. That's better than me because they know how to beat anybody at a top level. And so I know our girls love that. And, and as a coach, you have to be a little more humble to open up, to have somebody that's better than you share into your team and and to give into those techniques and things like that and so me that's what i've got to be able to open my arms and welcome some in that are going to help our team as progressively as the teams get better and better and they're you know amazing as they get through the sport and play how well they can throw and and all this it's cool to see that as a head coach what are some of your future plans for the disc golf program moving forward yeah i think our 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 plans have been kind of set. We, we're on our 13th year. You know, we met our five-year goals. We met our 10-year goals. Our 15-year goals aren't much different than our five and 10-year goals, really, to, to build a strong program, to represent the university well, to represent Christ in our faith well as we go and travel, to compete at all levels with our sport. Um, you know, really with us, it's bringing more people in that can help us get better. Um, we have a strength and conditioning team now at Liberty that's helping our guys fitnessly really draw into their inner strength of getting stronger, being able to compete at levels where you're competing for four or five days, sometimes um, a lot of rounds. And so I think the layers of where we are are just going to get thicker and thicker and thicker to where, you know, which one's the coach here? They're all coaching each other. I love that my, my top four guys, my top two ladies are coaching our other teammates. They're, they're coaching their peers. They're, they're feeding into the program because they believe in what they're doing, what we've taught them to do, and they're passing that along. So we just want to get better at that. Um, and with that will come wins. With that will come championships. And and I'm not worried about being specific that we have to win this year or that year. That doing the little things right, being disciplined, will result in us winning. What advice would you give those incoming freshmen entering their first year of college disc golf? Yeah, we tell them all the time to trust the process. You know, I think for many of them, They've had good success and they've had it really fast, um, you know, especially since, you know, 2020 with COVID and 
and times being limited to doing certain things, disc golf was one of those things that you could do a lot of. And I have to remind these guys now that they were playing eight hours a day and now they're not going to be able to play eight hours a day. They got to go to school. They got to do these other things. And so trusting the time that we get with them, you know, and helping them get better through the process and having guys around them that are better that they have to compete against is going to help them get better. So not thinking that they're going to jump right away and, and be at the top of the game, but allowing themselves to be coached, to be coachable and to have peers feed into them. That's the number one struggle because they just go from something that they had free reign of to now a lot of structure. What advice were you of those college athletes that are looking to be professional disc golf players after their collegiate time? Yeah, come to Liberty because uh, we've got uh, programs set in place like no other. Um, you know, there's a few programs that have some uh, seasoned pros that are coaching their teams. So they know the avenues to get in and out of, but we have the companies that are actually paying the pros um, that are a part of our program, sponsoring our teams, um, helping them navigate that at a, at a college level. So when they graduate, they know what to do. They know how to act. They know how to, you know, get out there and, and get those bonuses and get those wins. And the companies love that they've been trained in that way so that they're, you know, a good representation of, of their sponsorship as well as, you know, representing Liberty on the field. We have about four in the professional circuit right now, competing, um, doing other things in, in their life of disc golf um, that they learned from being here at Liberty. So, you know, we're, we're proud of that. We want to continue to grow those relationships so that it's not the driving force, but at the end, you want to know that if you want to go compete and you're good enough, that there's a lane for you to get there pretty easily. What advice would you have those future head coaches out there looking to build their own program and build their own legacy and bringing a sport like disc golf to the college level? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is helping these universities understand that they have some student athletes that want to represent their school in a very unique sport. Um, does it have 100 football players? You know, no, it's not that big. Uh, is it going to bring in the money that a football program would? Absolutely not. But you're going to connect with, for us, we're connecting with 30 student athletes that are going to retain and stay at Liberty for their career because disc golf has solidified them in that program. And so I I encourage the coaches to really find if they are able to get an academic advisor or an administrative advisor or even their campus recreation department to be invested in them so that you have somebody on the inside, that you have somebody that you're working with partnerly that will help you correlate what it is that your population of student disc golfers, however many it is, is translating to a successful program and a university that's represented throughout the collegiate world. And we Last year at Nationals, we had 117 schools represented, and there were a lot of schools that didn't make the cut. So the field is growing. You know, if you go look at collegediscgolf.com, you can see all the schools that are represented, and it's hundreds. That's great advice. Where can my listeners find you at on social media along with the program app? Yeah, so ours is liberty.edu slash discgolf. That'll pull you up to our page. You'll find the bios of me and my assistant coach. You can email us from there. You can see our programs collegediscgolf.com will show you where, um, you know, all the colleges are in your region. If you want to get kind of help with a, uh, get set up in a, in a conference or learn how to play, call me, reach out to me, email me. I'd love to help you get your program going. You know, we're, we're about helping other schools that navigate that. Um, you know, the pdga.com is a great resource for young players to learn how to play the game. Um, see what the top level pros play, what the beginner guys play and, and everything in between um, for men's and women's at, at all levels. And that's, that's the beauty of sport. It, we have one of the largest women's teams in the program in the country, and we have probably one of the largest guys uh, programs in the country. So uh, we're doing things right. We're blessed. And we we're thankful that we have a university that, that pours into us so I can pour into my student athletes and, and we're one of a kind. So that's great. Thank you again, Coach Steve Bowen, for your interview and best of luck in your future at Liberty as the head club disc golf coach. Thank you. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon, and you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Coach Steve Bowen, for your interview and best of luck in your future. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, Share and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.